89.7 WGLS-FM. This is your sports director, Danny Ryan, here alongside the terrific, the legendary Kate Scott, play-by-play television broadcaster for the Philadelphia 76ers. Thank you so much for joining me and Nick here today. Or Nick and I, I should say, here today. I call thanks, myself, thanks for having me, boys. call and myself I like, a communications major. I like, I like the intro music, too. Oh, everyone loves the intro music. You have to. It, <laughs> in this you have area. to. It's the best song ever. No, seriously, Kate, I appreciate all your time and uh, you know staying this late at night here at Pizza with the Pros at Rowan University and joining Nick and myself here today. For my first question... I have to ask you, I know it was briefly mentioned in Pizza with the Pros, um, (laughs) but what was it like, you know, just transitioning from the West Coast to the East Coast, but more specifically, what was it like when you first got your taste of Philadelphia fans in the entire city? Uh, It was incredible, and it was cold. Those are the two things. Although it wasn't as cold as I expected it to be right off the bat. Um, No, it, it has been, as I mentioned in our auditorium segment of the show, um, it has been everything that I hoped it would be but I wasn't sure that it would because I had always heard what a tough sports town this was I knew that I was a California kid coming to the East Coast I knew that it was provincial and that you know Zoo was born and raised here and Temple and Tom too and there's I I knew I was going to be an outsider trying to dive into the deep end Uh, but I have had so many fantastic interactions with people like you guys tonight And all I keep saying is thanks for giving me a chance because I knew that I was an outsider, but people are giving me a chance and that's all you can ask for when you start a new job anywhere in any industry. Uh, And on top of that, your food's really good. Your beer's really good. (laughs) Your city's flat so I can walk everywhere after burning my calves for years in San Francisco. Uh, everything is cheaper here and on sale. And you sacrifice one small thing, <laughs> warm weather. That's it. And and it wasn't a bad December. I was yeah. expecting it to snow like the it day was, I got here mild. in September. It was mild this December that's, for sure. That's what everybody, I appreciate that. I am ready for the snow in the future. I've dealt with snow in the past, but I appreciate that the city seemingly, people and food and weather have helped me make a smooth transition. Yeah, well, May will be here long enough, so you'll have the full package <laughs> once it's warm yes. weather. You have the nice food, the nice beer, like you said, no hills. Uh, Philadelphia is your home from now on. Nick, I'll swing it over to you and uh, take it away. So I want to ask you, because we both are interns for the Delaware Blue Coats. I want to ask you about what you've seen from the G League, uh, you know, coming coming, you know, through through the NBA and and its ascension to the NBA. What what would you say surprised you about the Delaware Blue Coats and seeing players like Paul Reed, Isaiah Joe come Mm -hmm. through the ranks and get to the 76ers? Well, I'm just so happy because for so long it seemed like there was such a big disconnect between what was the D League when I was your guys' age. And the G League now, they have finally really made it a feeder system, which I think is so important, right? That's one of the things that baseball has that our soccer academies are trying to get here in the States. That's one of the reasons that the NFL is trying to get other football leagues going because you can never have enough talent prepared because you never know when a global pandemic is going to happen. Hopefully that is not the case, but right. You don't know when somebody's going to tear an ACL or whatever the injury may be. So I think for so long, the NBA was searching for that. And now it's fantastic because we're seeing literally right now that these guys, because of the games they're playing in the G league are some of them are ready for the next step. And I think it's also cool that they're so close because that's super helpful. So guys can play for the Blue Coats one night and play for us the next night. And so I think it's a big deal. Right. And Andre Drummond was at the Blue Coats game wearing the Paul Reed jersey. That was pretty cool, I I thought. I know. I'm trying to get down to a game sometime soon because I haven't been to Delaware yet. We can carpool. Yeah, Yeah, we could do that. Okay, (laughs) I'll cover gas. (laughs) uh, That that sounds like a deal to me. I'm a college student over here. I can barely afford gas. Um, No, but, you know, in all seriousness, Nick brings up a great point there. I mean, Charlie Brown Jr., Braxton Key. I mean, even Haywood Highsmith had a 10-day contract with the Miami Heat. So many players this year specifically yeah. coming up from the G League and making an impact uh, in the NBA. Of course, you know, coming down back to the G League every now and again. But it's important to have them. And with how talented the Blue Coats have been this season, it's just you almost have to admire the, the effort the Philadelphia 76ers have put into the G League system because they have the luxury to, you know, bring up players and they need, need to, you know, whether it be, yeah. like you mentioned, pandemic or anything like that uh quickly switching gears back to your your work throughout your career i mean your entire career you've been doubted you've been you know you were an athlete and you wanted to make it big in the sports industry 
obviously that takes a lot of mo- motivation. What was the motivation for you to just keep going? I mean, from being the Mike man, or should I say Mike woman <laughs> at UC no, Berkeley? Can, we were Mike men. We were Mike men. I was just the first Mike Wu man, yeah. but I considered myself a Mike man for, too. From going there and then, you know, to where you are now, calling yeah. games on television for the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah. I mean, that must be surreal to you. Where did the motivation come from? Just keep it pushing against all odds. Yeah, uh, it is pretty wild that just hearing you say that, I still, <laughs> it blows me away. Um, this is what I want to do. And like I said uh, a little while ago, um, it sets my soul on fire. The fact that I am lucky enough to get to do something I love and get paid for it. Uh, and that's how I felt since I was your age and interning and scraping things together. And that's how I felt in my first couple of sideline gigs where I was spending more money on gas and makeup than I was actually getting paid for the games I was calling. I was like losing money to get experience. Um, So then waking up at 3 a.m. for five years, working on a morning show in San Francisco, like there was so much tough, but I would just keep coming back to when I woke up, whatever time of day or night it was, and I was getting ready to go to work, I would look in the mirror and say, are you still loving this? Like I would have this conversation with myself and I would say, yeah, I'm getting to go talk about sports for the next seven hours and get paid for it. So I just keep checking in with myself because I have a lot of friends who love sports, but they ask themselves that question and somewhere along the line, something else became more important and I totally understood it. And they're so happy now because they made that shift, that pivot. Um, but every time I've asked myself that question, I just keep coming back to, yeah, man, how lucky am I to get to do this? And you make a good point there. You know, something more important might come up. The might, dedication might not be there. It might be there, but other things just take priority. Yeah. Now, you have a family, a smaller family, if you're going to, but you still have a family. Um, <laughs> Two and a half. <laughs> that was my biggest concern, honestly, getting into this industry. Like, yeah. I want to have a family. I want to have kids. I want to live that American lifestyle, but mm-hmm. at the same time, a lot of my work will be dedicated to doing research, doing notes, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. How do you balance that being the full you know, main play-by-play yeah. play voice of the Philadelphia 76ers? I mean, it must be hard. You find a very understanding partner and you're very honest with them from the get-go. Um, you know, I've been with my wife for 16 years now. We've been married for 13. And on our second date, I said, this is what I want to do. It's going to be nights and weekends. It's going to suck. You're going to have to go to weddings alone. I'm going to miss your birthday. I'm going to, you're sometimes going to spend holidays with your family while I'll be somewhere else calling a game. And she didn't walk away? Uh, Not yet. (laughs) There have been other times. No. Um, But I think communication is so important with your partner when you work in this industry because it does suck a lot. And there's been plenty of times where she's been really upset with me, even though she knew something was going to happen. Like I was in Massachusetts calling an A A 10 basketball game on her 40th birthday. It's tough. On our anniversary this year, I was, I had a big weekend plan and then Fox asked me if I could fly down to LA and call a gold cup match. And I was like, and I just told her, I said, so this is the opportunity. You know, I want to hopefully call world cups one day. And she said, I hate you. And then she said, go. I hate you, but I love you. I hate you, but (laughs) go because I don't want you to resent me because I know this is your love, but I also know you love me a lot. And I make sure whenever I am there and present that I am as present as possible. And send her flowers on a Tuesday just because I appreciate the fact that she, you know, was left on the other side of the country to be a single dog parent and sell our house and do all these things that I should have been helping her with, but I couldn't because I had to be the voice of the Sixers. So I think just communicate and find somebody who is going to understand the madness and then just keep showering them with gifts as often as you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just to make up for it. You got to yes. balance it somehow, you exactly. know what I mean? You have to find the balance at some point. <laughs> Um, but I'll ask one more question. Um, since arriving to Philadelphia, mm-hmm. what has been the biggest surprise since arriving here? What has shocked you since you got to Philadelphia? What's shocked me? Um, I would say actually how beautiful it is um, because we have a, a lot of beauty on the West Coast, right? Like I got to drive across the Golden Gate Bridge because my mom lived north of San Francisco. Right. Um, Tahoe, the mountain ranges, the Pacific Ocean, so much beauty. Um, and there's there's parks everywhere here. Yeah, there's a lot. I didn't know there was there's so much outdoor space, which I love because I'm a hiker and I just love being outside because I'm usually either at a computer or in an arena. So I like being out and breathing fresh air as much as I can. And, and there's lakes and the ocean and there's everything here as well. So I think just the natural beauty. And in the Bay Area, we didn't have seasons like it's 
beautiful and mostly 60 most of the year and there's an occasional cold days and occasionally right. but the leaves don't change colors there's no snow and i had always wanted that like i knew when it was fall i knew when it was starting to be winter so i i just really love just the natural beauty of this place and you will occasionally get a 60 degree day and then snow the next <laughs> day that will heard. happen occasionally That's you will you will experience well, that. it was 72 <laughs> degrees in dallas on tuesday of last week and when we got there on thursday it was 12 and they, they were having yeah. an ice storm yeah so. it's in, it's crazy crazy it's it is wild. crazy yeah. um one more question for you i would ask what was the advice that uh mark zumoff gave you when taking this job mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh he said don't try to be the next zoo they hired kate scott they want kate scott be you and just be you and know that it's going to take a long time because people didn't love me as much as they love me now 27 years ago when I first started this job. It took me a long time to get to where I am. So just be you and call and text anytime you need. I'm here. And he's just, I, I thought whoever took over for Zoo was going to be a freaking idiot. And here I am. Hello, <laughs> it's me. But now that I'm here, I don't think I could have come into a better situation because he understands what I am going through and has been so supportive and wonderful because of it. You talk about a terrific role model, Mark yeah. Zumoff. He's helped you, you know, with your entire transition to yeah. being a part of the Philadelphia 76ers organization. So my final question before we wrap up the interview, who was your biggest inspiration during, you know, the process in which you realized you want to do this for a living? I mean, you are a huge inspiration for so many women in the sports industry. Who was your biggest inspiration that said, you know, uh, clicked in your mind and yeah. said, all right, we need to do this and we need to do this now? Yeah. Uh, it was Beth Mowens when it comes to play-by-play. Um, because she was, she and Pam Ward were the only women I knew because Gail Searns, who was the first woman to call a football game, uh, who was the first big opportunity was, did it in the eighties when I was like three years old and she inspired Beth and Beth was, because I was on the West coast was calling a lot of Mountain West football. So I heard her more than Pam Ward who was calling in other parts of the country. So I just lashed on to that. And then as I started doing this and moving up, uh, I actually got connected with her and she has been an incredible mentor to me and would text me inspiring things, would check in on me. I was able to go shadow her at some games she called. And I don't think I would be here without her. Um, and there's been a ton of other women and men who have helped me get here. So it would take 20 million minutes to list all of them off. But but I don't think I would be here if it Beth has opened so many doors because I know people who have hired me saw her and said, okay, she doesn't suck. She's pretty good, right? <laughs> Give her a chance. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's, that's the you thing. Can, there's so many men out there that suck. Why don't we get an opportunity <laughs> to suck too? No, I'm kidding. Um, but, uh, but because of her, uh, I know a lot of doors were open for me. Um, and to see how she's mentored not just me but other people, that's one of the reasons I'm really inspired to hopefully pass that baton to the next generation. But, yeah, Beth yeah. is – been huge in my career. Yeah, I was just about to ask you before you said that. I yeah. mean, how does it feel that probably in 20, 30 years, somebody will be saying that about you, someone very successful in the industry? Yeah. Kate Scott was my biggest inspiration. <laughs> she opened the door for me. That's wild. And uh, I can't wrap my head around it, and I don't think I ever will be able to, but I, ho- I hope that that rings true because that would make me really happy. Oh, I'm, I'm it definitely believer will. that it will. 100%. Yeah. 100%. No doubt thank you, it. boys. Thank well, you, guys. Thank you very much, Kate, for sitting down and taking the time to speak with us here at Rowan Radio. For myself, Danny Ryan, and my terrific broadcast partners, Nick Earnshaw and the great Scott, Kate Scott. <laughs> thank you so much for sitting down with us, and have a great day, everyone. Thank you very much.